Howdy. My name is Nonat. We're not wasting any time. We are here looking at the brand new announced Guns and Gears playtest, ladies and gentlemen. We have gotten the Gunslinger and the Inventor classes officially announced from Paizo to be coming sometime in the future. I am hyped, but I'm going to try to keep this video shorter because I'm still running on mobile hotspot data, but I want to get this to you. So I might split these up into multiple parts. I'm definitely splitting up the Gunslinger and the Inventor, but I might even split the classes into two different videos each just so I can hopefully upload a smaller video and not eat up all of my mobile data at once. Otherwise, this will be an hour long video like last time. But they are martial classes, I think. Um, so we'll just go ahead and jump into it, and hopefully it won't take too, too long. Starting off with the Gunslinger, which both of these, I should say, are uncommon classes. This is the first time, I believe, a class has been deemed uncommon. So, you know, you need your GM's permission to even take it. It's not available to just everybody automatically. But from what we see, Dexterity, Key Ability Boost, 8 Hit Point uh, con plus Con Modifier, pretty standard stuff. It's, I think, pretty much the exact same as the Ranger, maybe a little bit less health. Uh, expert in Perception, Fortitude Saves, which I guess makes sense. You need some solid Fortitude to take the kickback. Uh, basically, Expert in Everything but Will Saves, which is an amazing start. That's fantastic. Starting Trained in Crafting already has me excited. This makes me think, uh, this is all, I should say, this is all blind first impressions. I have not read any farther than what you see on screen. I have not scrolled down that far. So we're, we're experiencing this together and I'm talking fast so I can get through it fast. I apologize. Um, but yeah, it sounds like we might be able to make our own firearms, which would be really cool. Trained in one or more skills determined by your way, which I'm guessing is Sorry, I, sorry, I just saw something. Uh, I'm guessing it's your subclass, and then three plus intelligence. Hold up, can we look at this? Can we look at this? Expert in firearms and crossbows. This is the first class, other than a fighter, to start expert in their attack rolls. What? This is insane. This is going to completely change the game. Wow. And melee simple and martial weapons are trained too. And there's advanced firearms. Oh, I'm going to make a separate video covering firearms too. Don't you worry. Holy crap. They still get light armor. That's really, really cool. I'm not going to worry about the flavor because I'm just looking at the, uh, and uh, like, you know, all the class stuff right now. Mechanically. Uh, I have to do background initial gunslinger feats. Yep, they are martial. They do get feats at first level. I don't know why they'd be magical, but you know. Gunslinger's Way. All gunslingers have a particular way they follow, a philosophy and combat style that defines how they fight and the weapons they excel with. Your way grants you proficiency, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, oh, let's check here. Uh, key terms. So they have flourishes, they have presses, which are like a fighter, uh, and a misfire. Firearms have, sorry, my camera's blocking it, um, have to be properly taken care of or subject to the usual strain can cause misfire. If you attempt to fire a firearm that was used the previous day and hasn't been clean, Dude, it's like a martial spellcaster! Once you use a firearm, like it's gone for the day, you know? Not necessarily gone, but it needs to be cleaned. Otherwise, you need to attempt a DC-5 flat check. If you fail, the weapon misfires and jams and becomes an auto-crit-fail attack and use an interact action to clear the jam. Dude! This is so cool! Once you spend at least an hour cleaning and maintaining, you don't need to roll a misfire until the next day unless an effect says otherwise. Certain abilities can cause a misfire too. Dude! <laughs> This is so cool! Alright, moving on, moving on. Uh, so there's three ways right now. There's the Way of the Drifter, which is wandering across the battlefield. Way of the Pistolero? You carefully maintain your distance at a duelist ten paces. Ah! Oh, and the Way of the Sniper! Oh my god! It doesn't say anything about them, though. It doesn't say what they do. That must be farther down. Um, here, let's, let's go find those first. Before we look at all the... Yeah, Gunslinger Ways. Here we go. Way of the Drifter. You're a wanderer traveling from land to land with your gun and a melee weapon as company. You become trained in athletics, and you have deeds? What the heck is a deed? I'm guessing the deed is just your ability. It's your fancy ability. Into the fray. When you roll initiative, you can interact... Oh, it's level one quick draw. That's so good. And a melee weapon? Dude, you draw freaking both with as a free action. As your first action on your next turn, you can stride. You can stride for free. These guys start freaking quickened. Level one, this guy's freaking quickened. Okay, but you have to end your movement next to them. Holy crap. At level one, the Wanderer gets 
effectively three free actions at the start of combat. Two weapon draws and a move action. What the hell? <laughs> let's keep reading, let's keep reading. Um, ad uh, advanced deeds, I guess we'll check these out while we're here. So there's initial, advanced, and greater deeds, which is similar to like a cleric doctrine and stuff like that. Rebounding assault for two actions if you're wielding a loaded firearm or crossbow and a melee weapon. You hurl your melee weapon into at an opponent, then fire a projectile into the weapon, causing it to deal bonus damage and bounce back. Make a thrown range strike with a melee weapon, then a range strike with your firearm. Both strikes use the same MPA or MAP. If the melee weapon doesn't have thrown, it gains thrown 10. If both attacks are successful, the bullet hits the weapon instead of your target, adding its force. Combine the damage and add 1d6 precision. Oh my, this is so stupid in the best way. This is... Throw a throwing axe, shoot it, it hits the axe, so the axe goes harder and bounces off back to your hand. What? what? <laughs> Moving on. And the greater deed is Drifter's Wake. You drift across the battlefield, striking down foes as you go. For three actions, you stride, not triggering reactions, and you can strike up to three points during your stride. Each attack must be a different enemy and must be made with a firearm, crossbow, one-handed melee weapon, or unarmed attack. I am now thinking of a monk gunslinger, which would be amazing. Uh, and MAP doesn't... Cool, yeah, so that's similar to, I think, uh, Path of Iron? Might be the one from the martial artist archetype. That's really cool. You just walk through and you're popping and slashing and punching people as you move. The only downside is it's only one stride. Really freaking good, dude. So, yeah, I'm already loving Drifter. Uh, several Gunslinger abilities work best if you dual-wield them. Um, for the purposes of the playtest, you can buy a special set of doubling rings that works in a slightly different way to share runes between... You can have dual pistols and have them share runes. I love that. For those of you who don't know, the doubling ring, you put it on one hand and wield a magic weapon, I think, in the other hand, and it auto-copies those runes into any weapon you're holding in a hand that has the doubling ring. That's... <laughs> Way of the Pistolero. Whether you're a professional duelist or a pistol-twirling entertainer, you have quick feet and quicker hands that never seem to let you down. You might leave a hand free, fight with twin pistols, or duel at any range like a musketeer. Ah! You're trained in deception or intimidation. You get initial ten paces. You react to trouble with lightning speed, you gain plus two to initiative at level one, and you can draw your weapon for free. As your first action on your next turn, you can step for free. So it's very similar to Into the Fray, which lets you stride for free. This one just lets you step for free, but gives you a bonus to initiative. So pretty balanced, honestly. I love that. Holy cow. And level 9, you can get Pistol Arrow's Retort, which I'm guessing is used as that deception or intimidation. Uh, if a foe within either your reach or your weapon's first range increment critically fails a strike, you get to shoot them. That's It's the swashbuckler. This is a ranged fighter swashbuckler. I mean, this one, specifically the Pistol Arrow, is a ranged swashbuckler. And that's so damn cool. And finish the job. Your, uh, for one action, if your last action was a failed strike... You can set up for another. Make a strike with your other hand using a second loaded firearm, blah, 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 blah. Your MAP doesn't apply to this strike. You can't make this strike. If you... Okay, that's kind of a boring level 15. It's nice that it doesn't increase your MAP, but that de finish the job pales in comparison to Drifter's Wake 100%. It's good. It's still really good. Not doesn't feel like it's too good for level 15, though. I think it's just because the first two are so good, though. Especially having a ranged attack of opportunity is always amazing, no matter what the trigger is. And Way of the Sniper... You practice a style of shooting that seeks to ensure that your first shot is perfectly placed. You keep hidden or at a distance, staying out of the fray, and bringing unseen death to your foes. Trained in stealth, that makes sense. Their initial one, they're already blowing one shot, one kill on the initial deed. This better be good. Uh, if you roll stealth for initiative, you interact to draw a firearm. On your first turn of this encounter, the first shot deals 1d6 precision. Okay, that's... A little situational, I think that's the weakest of the three. It does the most damage, but it's a little more situational. You know, if you get ambushed, this does nothing. But the bonus damage is nice. I assume you're using something like a sniper rifle or a heavy crossbow, so bonus damage on top of that is already going to hit like a truck. This might lead to a possible highest uh, potential damage at level 1.
That'll depend on how much damage firearms do. I'm guessing since they need to be, like, cleaned and stuff, they're gonna be stronger than crossbows. They have to be, right? At level 9, you get Vital Shot. For two actions, you make a ranged strike. If they're flat-footed, you deal an extra... Oh my god! So, let me explain what this means. If they're flat-footed... I mean, this is level 9, I guess this isn't as strong as level 9, but you probably have at least a striking, if not a greater striking weapon at this point, so if you're hitting for 2 weapon damage die, and your barbarian has them grabbed, they're flat-footed, you can shoot them in a vital organ, and they not only take an extra weapon damage die, which is probably going to be a d10 or a d12, but they also take bleed damage persistent equal to your freaking bonus damage from your one shot one kill which at level nine is 2d6 so if you're using a d10 weapon then vital shot is two actions to shoot once but you deal an extra 1d10 plus 2d6 persistent damage on that shot this is disgusting i love it keep in mind this doesn't even say like crossbow or bow or anything so you can do this with a bow you wouldn't want to because nothing else in the gunslinger would really work with a bow but you can you can even do this with a rock it just says a range strike, so you can throw a rock at someone's kidney and rupture it. Level 15's Ghost Shot. For one action, you make a firearm or crossbow strike. If you're hidden, undetected, or unobserved... Nice. Okay. Cool. So they're finally fixing the assassin issue where they're adding, you know, is you just have to be hidden, not undetected. As long as you're hidden, the strike deals additional precision damage equal to one shot, one kill and you don't become observed. That's the big one. You can only do this once per round, but especially if you're okay being patient, you can just pow, stay hidden, maybe spend an action reloading and just stay hidden, and just once per round, they don't even know where you are. You're just popping out, shooting, and hiding again. That's incredible. You don't even need to reroll your hide check. All right, let's check out some class features. Skill feats, general feats, skill increases. Uh, like most classes, they're the same as most classes. Stubborn at third level. Willing, so already level three, they're an expert in every saving throw. Uh, and should you normal fail a will save against an effect that would give you the controlled condition, you can make a new save, pardon me, at the start of every turn. That's Or just next turn. Uh, on a successful save, the condition ends, though any other effects remain. Interesting. So it looks like you only get one extra saving throw, actually. It says, you can attempt a new sit Well, whenever you fail, but not critically fail, against an effect that would give you the controlled condition, you can attempt a new save at the start of your next turn. Which, to me, thinks if you normal fail again, you can try again on the following turn. So, yeah, that's, that's actually really good for a level 3. I don't know how often you'll come in contact with the controlled condition at level 3, but this, this is almost weird to tack onto a class. This feels like an ancestry feat. I'm not mad about it, but I don't think it meshes well. Because, you know, not all gunslingers are going to be stubborn. You know, hashtag not all gunslingers, am I right? Um, they're not all stubborn, but at the same time, it's cool. It's a nice upgrade for the class, and I kind of dig it. Uh, ability boost at 5th level, ancestry feats, gunslinger weapon mastery. They, <laughs> they really are a ranged fighter. Your proficiency rank increases to master at level 5. That's ridiculous. This is a little balanced compared to fighters because I think every single weapon their master in has to be reloaded. No matter what firearm, no matter what crossbow, you have to be able to reload it. Which means you can't attack three times in one turn and get three critical hits. Really cool. This is just fighter weapon mastery, but only for guns and crossbows. Uh, Vigilant Senses. You're a master in perception. That makes sense. Weapon specialization. You get your advanced deed, which we just covered. Uh, proficiency rank in your class DC. Evasion, I'm guessing, yeah, is master in reflex saves. Am I right? Uh, you roll a success. Yep. Uh, level 13. Legendary. In addition, choose one weapon group, such as bombs or swords, and increase that to master. Dude, these guys are, I mean, it's amazing. It's another, similar to a fighter, but, I mean, just as good as a fighter. But it has to be ranged. It has a limitation on it. I think this is something that the fighter needed. Uh, maybe even the inverse. If fighters had to be melee, but they could still get, like, master in ranged weapons, that might be a little more balanced. I like this a lot. They can get legendary, but their options for being legendary are limited. They don't get expert armor until 13th level. Wow, so they are super glass cannon. If these, if these guys get caught out, they're going to take a beating. Their armor class is not going to be anywhere near um, things like a fighter. 
Greater detail level 15, greater weapon specialization. They get Juggernaut, nice. So critical success, uh, normal success fortitude saves are critical successes. And they get Master Proficiency. Shootist's Edge. <laughs> That's a funny name. Uh, Gunslinger class, DC increases to Master. When using a ranged weapon, this triples your range. As long as you're at least a Master in a ranged weapon, this triples your range increment before you start taking penalties. Now, it looks like you don't just push the penalties back. You know, second range increment is usually a minus two, third increment's minus four, thir uh, third one, uh, fourth one's minus uh, six. Uh, it looks like this one is just no penalty up through the third increment, and then the fourth increment is probably an instant minus six, like usual, because it doesn't say it delays it. Uh, but I could be wrong. It's sort of hard to interpret there, but I would play it that way. You know, once they're... <laughs> freaking 800 feet away you're taking a heavy penalty but what's what's the what's the range increment on a longbow 150 feet i think that's insane i think crossbows might be longer just as long i don't know that's amazing though this on the sniper that's ridiculous uh legendary perception and master and light armor nice so like most martial classes pretty simple class features uh i'm digging it let's take a look at the feet shall we uh, I really, uh, I, you know what, you know what we're going to do? Uh, again, I want to keep these videos short so I can upload them without chewing through my data. We're going to go over the feats tomorrow. And for now, we're going to take a look at the firearms themselves. Cause I feel like this is something people are super excited about because these aren't limited to just gunslingers. You know, your ranger or your monk can take these weapons and use them. But I do want to see what does it mean if people are trained in martial ranged weapons how does that include firearms i could be missing it but i don't see it anywhere so i assume they're just uncommon so you know your gm has to say yes you can have this but as long as they give you the okay and you're trained in martial weapons like a fighter or a ranger or even a champion you can take these so going top to bottom we have the flintlock musket which is just a two-handed only 1d6 that's actually shocking that's a lot lower, but they do have Fatal. So this is actually just a short bow with versatile bludgeoning damage. That's cool. It, I don't know how you choose your gun's damage, but it either does piercing or bludgeoning damage, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, yeah, basically a short bow in gun form, which I'm fine with. Uh, Flintlock Pistol is only 1d4. Wow, and only a 20-foot range. These are lower range than crossbows. Okay, so I think that's where crossbows are going to get their bonus, is they don't have the Fatal trait, but they have a really long range increment. Uh, but yeah, Pistol, Fatal d8. Again, if you take something like the dual-wielding archetype, the uh, the dual-wielder fighter, I don't remember what it's called, and have two pistols, uh, you could do some nasty damage with this, especially if you're getting enough critical hits. And then the hand cannon is modular, which is a new weapon description, which we can check up here. This weapon has multiple configurations that using an interact action can switch. Uh, looks like the most common one is going to be you can choose, you have to spend an action swapping it, but you can choose bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage, which is really neat. So it's a shorter range than the pistol, but you exchange that range for the ability to swap to a third type of damage, which can be useful. And here are the three big boys in the martial weapons. I don't think we even have any advanced ones. No, there are currently no advanced ranged firearms, uh, as opposed to melee firearms. Though some of these might as well be melee. You know, the hand cannons, you know, it's five feet from melee. Um, but starting with the Arquebus, I think that's how you pronounce it. It is 1d8. This has a range of 80 feet. So this is your sniper. This, is, oh, it even has the sniper trait and the unsteady trait, which are both new. And I believe this is the first weapon other than the great pick to have fatal d12. So a critical hit with this thing at level one is dealing 1d8 plus 1d12. Pretty solid. So Sniper and Unsteady are right here. When you hit a flat-footed creature, this deals one bonus damage. Uh, this increases to plus two if the weapon is at least potency plus three. That's fine. It's a little bit of extra damage. You know, if you crit, that's going to get doubled. That'll just make your number that much bigger. Not bad. But Unsteady, this weapon is difficult to aim without taking measures to stabilize. Firing this weapon has a minus two circumstance penalty unless the weapon is attached to a deployed tripod or you take an action to aim. That's so well done. I love this balancing mechanic. You know, this thing is a really good weapon, but you know, you can't just hip fire a sniper rifle. You have to either like take a breath for an action and shoot it, but I love that you can also buy a tripod to just 
for one action, set it up, commit to your location, especially if you're hidden in a bush, uh, and then just start taking pot shots at no penalty. That's incredible. I honestly think taking the action to aim is probably worth it, uh, as you will be hard-pressed to fire off more than one shot of a firearm in a round anyway. So if your turn, I mean, granted, it's unfortunate, and it would get you into the heavy crossbow repetitive routine of two-action reload shoot, two-action reload shoot every turn, but, you know, if you're a sniper, that's what you do. You know, you, you aim, you fire, you reload. Rinse and repeat. That's really, really cool. The Blunderbuss, with a range of 15 feet, 1d8 piercing, has the last... No, yeah, I believe this is the last new trait of Scatter. This is a weapon that fires in a cone. This is a martial weapon that attacks in a cone. You choose one target to be the primary target. Uh, if the creature is targeted and damaged based on the results of your attack roll is normal. In addition, all creatures within the cone take splash dam- oh, okay. So it, it's really, really weak. It's not like the blunderbuss deals max damage to everything in the cone. It's more like most of it is concentrated in one direction and everything in the cone might take like a little piece of shrapnel. It only deals one bonus damage if it's not a striking weapon. Two damage if it's striking, three for greater. That's fine. You know, it's similar to the sniper. It's going to do more damage. It rewards you for getting in melee because just between you and me, I think a melee blunderbuss duelist, I mean a <laughs> gunslinger, sounds ridiculously fun. And the Dueling Pistol is the last one, and I just noticed this, that Dueling Pistol and Arquebus say first level, so I'll see if I can figure out what that means before we end the video here. Uh, because I have been jumping around a little bit, I haven't read all of this verbatim, because I'm trying to get this out as fast as possible, this video is already a little over 20 minutes unedited, uh, and I want it to be about 15 to 20 minutes to start with. Uh, Dueling Pistol does 1d6, that's more than the Flintlock. Uh, it is concealable, which is very solid. Fatal D10, even better than the flintlock. Versatile, so yeah, it's just a better flintlock, because it's martial, you know? Uh, but I love the idea that even your wizard, without taking any feats, without taking any special skills or upgrades or anything, can still use a flintlock pistol if your GM lets you have it. You know, they're expensive, you know, you only start with 15 gold, and that's six. But how cool would it be once your wizard's out of spell slots, you don't want to shoot cantrips, you pull out your flintlock and you just start taking pot shots. That's so freaking cool, and I love this system. It also looks like the crit specialization for, for firearms uh, is actually similar to that of clubs, where they make a fortitude save against your class DC or they're stunned one, so they're losing an action because, you know, they were shot. So I can't find anything about this first level Arquebus and first level Dueling Pistol. Uh, maybe we will when we look into the feats, we'll find out, but that's going to be in the next video. Uh, this is probably going to get pumped out tonight. Like, I didn't plan on making a video today, but I forgot the playtest was coming out, and when I saw it come out, it really hit me with that, with that energy that I wanted to make something. Uh, so sorry for splitting these into mini videos, but hey, hopefully you'll keep coming back for more. Maybe you'll even subscribe so you know exactly when it goes up tomorrow. So thank you guys so very much for watching. Quick shout out to my patrons. There's a link to my Patreon in the description. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and until next time, no nat ones. This is really cool, guys.